is an honor to be with y'all. And I, he was mentioning prayer, and I want you to know uh, I have prayed much for each one of you. You say, how, can, how do you know that? How could you do that? You just met us when we walked in the door because the Lord knows mm -hmm. who's here. Amen. And I was thinking about it as I was uh, coming flying up today, just what you were talking about. You know, it's been a short uh, relationship, three years, but it's been, you know, in spurts. But thinking about how the Lord moves. Mm -hmm. And I'll finish this story. When he approached me about coming, as I had just finished preaching, another preacher had approached me and says, hey, I need to talk to you. And I thought, well, sometimes <laughs> with our brethren, well, I must have said something that offended. Or, uh, but it wasn't. It was encouragement and good. And then Brother Larry says, hey, I need to talk to you. And I thought, man, <laughs> I might not make it out of here. So... <laughs> And uh, that's when he approached me and said that, uh, you know, he, he, in fact, what he said, he said, I've been putting this off. He said, but, uh, the Lord made it very clear, I, I, you need to come preach to our people. And I said, okay. And like I said, we tried to figure everything out. And the original date didn't work. Right. It, was set, I, it was set in my mind, but it wasn't in his, and it just didn't work out. But now's the time. Hey, Amen. Now's the time, and I know it's the time by the two hymns we just sang. And I think after we get through tonight, you'll see how it ties in. So what I want to talk about a little bit tonight, I'll just give you a little introduction. So if it starts off slow for you, just bear with me. I'm headed in the direction this week. <laughs> um, but I, I am thankful uh, for Brother Larry's friendship. And what you're going to find throughout this week is you'll find out why he, why he was probably... Uh, sort of attracted to my preaching because I've been told I'm, I'm like Larry Lafferty this oh, here. <laughs> I move around a lot so and uh, but I move around a lot as, as, and he knows he doesn't do it either we don't say uh, now I'll come down uh, it's just you're yeah. wound up about what you're preaching right and uh, I pray we, we should be that way so anyhow, it is a great honor to be here. I'm thankful to be here. Looking forward to the week and what it brings. Because when I would pray for y'all, I kept, I, I, I'd try to go over here. I'd try to go over there. You know, and I understand I could recycle sermons. And I, there's nothing wrong with that. And, you know, we buy guns. We don't just shoot them once. You know, I get that. And there's a time and place for that. But I could not do that. You had. And uh, so what I'm going to be preaching, I preached a few years ago, but I didn't preach this message. <laughs> so, but just bear with me while I lead you into this. I'm not going to give you the book quite yet because I don't want you to start building your own sermon. I want you to follow where we're headed here. And uh, it's very important here. So as we approach this week, I'm looking for things to happen. And I hope you are too. Amen. I hope you're looking for something to happen within you. Because here as I preach to you, I'm searching and I want something to happen within me. Amen. You say, you're a pastor, you're a preacher, you, everything should be in place. I'm a man. That's it. Amen. I need correction. I need, I need refreshing. I need revival. I need that fire to stay good and hot. Amen. So we need these things to take place. Around us in our country, we see wickedness multiplying at a great rate. We see evil showing itself everywhere. Amen. And... We tend to hang our head, and we should not. We tend to hang our head, and it is bad. I get that. It is bad. But we tend to hang our head and say, oh, if we could just go back to the way things used to be. Used to, the church houses were packed out. Used to, there was standing room only, especially if the preacher mentioned he was going to preach Revelation. I mean, I mean they, people would stand outside and hear, what is this book about? People used to uh, just, I mean, the kids used to play in the churchyards at night, the nighttime service, the doors would open up and the lights were on, the kids would be, you'd hear the laughter and the people were fellowshipping. The men were strong at work mm -hmm. and helping and doing. The women were strong and providing, having meals prepared. Those were the old days. Yeah. The old days. But tonight I would ask you just to get the mindset and the focus going. Is revival important to you? Hmm. As Brother Larry said, I, I have no doubt that there's many in here saved, but I don't know what the condition of each heart in here is and their soul. I don't know where it rests in the realm of eternity. But as we just said, as we just sang, Jesus is coming soon. Mm -hmm. Morning, night, or noon. Yeah. No man knows. But revival should be important to each and every one of us. I, if I added the years up in here, we'd need a calculator of the years of salvation, I'm sure. 
But think about this. The word revival, defined as a noun, the word comes from revive. It's defined as this. The first definition of the word revive is return. Mm. Recall or recovery to life from death or apparent death. Amen. As the revival of a drowned person. I think it's interesting on the second definition of it is return or recall to activity from a state of labor as the revival of spirits. The third definition is recall, return or recovery from a state of neglect, oblivion, obscurity, or depression as the revival of letters of learning. Mm -hmm. The last one, renewed and more active attention to religion mm. as awakening of men to their spiritual concerns. Mm. Yeah. Amen. A lot of times we use words in life and we forget they lose their luster, they lose their shine to us because it just becomes common. But I'd ask you this tonight, is God still on the throne? Amen. Is Jesus still at his right hand? You know he is. You know he is. Then guess what? It's time for revival. There you go. It's mm. time for revival. I'm going here first. I'm not necessarily preaching this tonight, but we're going to go to 2 Chronicles chapter 7, if you would. Tonight we're, we're setting the tone for the week. 2 Chronicles chapter 7. Something people miss out on a lot when they read this, when it's quoted, when people mention it, because we tend to look out in the world. And oh, if this world would repent, oh, if this world would get right, oh, if these people would turn from their wicked ways. But I want us to really focus in here. We'll start at verse 12. It says, And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer. Amen. And have chosen this place to myself for an house of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people, I don't know if you underline your Bibles, but if you do, that'd be a good one to underline. Right. If Amen. my people, which are called by my name, Amen. shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Amen. Now mine eyes shall be open and my ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. For now I have chosen and sanctified this house that Amen. my name may be there forever and mine eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. Amen. I could keep going, but we see the point. It's this, his people must humble themselves. His people must pray. See, you, you imagine it like this. You just take it, if, you, if I had a big board here tonight, if I drew a huge circle, take, take that map and take a big circle and I made a bunch of dots out there and that represents all the people. Bunch of people, millions of people all around us. Mm -hmm. But now let's draw a small circle within the big circle. Mm -hmm. And you fill that up with dots. That's who he's talking about. Amen. You're right. If my people mm -hmm. will humble themselves, not all of them, right. not out here, not, not everyone, yeah. my people. That's it. If they will humble themselves and pray, I'll heal their land. It takes a humble spirit to get revival. Amen. There has to be humility. Amen. It has to come. For there to be revival, there must be humility. When humility arrives, honesty prevails. When honesty prevails, there is opportunity for revival. Amen. There is opportunity for something new again, refreshed, Amen. given life. As we start this journey, I challenge you. I am challenging you tonight. When you go home tonight, pray. Mm -hmm. When you get up in the morning, pray. When you have your lunch hour tomorrow, pray for what? This meeting. Amen. These people. This preacher. That pastor. Mm -hmm. Pray. 
See, a lot of times when if you think of revival, people think of big tent meetings and just hundreds and hundreds of people. Well, that, wouldn't that be a blessing? All right. But guess where it starts? One attracts another. Mm -hmm. And another attracts another. And that's how it works. I was just talking with your pastor about that. Many people hear and see a great movement. And they could see a great movement among this church and God's people that would cause an interest. I, I'm still here in 2 Chronicles, and I will read a little further because it will seal this off. Verse 17, it says, And as for thee, if thou wilt walk before me as David thy father walked, and do according to all that I have commanded thee, and shall observe my statutes and my judgments, then will I establish the throne of thy kingdom, according as I have covenanted with David thy father, saying, There shall not fail thee a man to be a ruler in Israel. Amen. But if ye turn away and forsake my statutes, and my commandments, which I set before you, and shall go and serve other gods and worship them, then will I pluck them up by the roots out of my land, which I have given them, and this house, which I have sanctified for my name, and will cast it out of my sight, and will make it to be a proverb and a byword among all nations. Amen. And this is, and this is what I want you to see. And this house, which is high, shall be an astonishment to everyone that passeth by it, so that he shall say, Why hath the Lord done thus unto this land and unto this house? And it shall be answered. And it shall be answered, because they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them forth out of the land of Egypt and laid hold on other gods and worshiped them and served them. Therefore hath he brought all this evil upon them. Mm -hmm. My prayer for this area, this church, starts right here, but it can spread out, is to have the other effect. Mm -hmm. To have the other effect. What if, there is, what if there is cars passing by tonight and they say, I wonder what's going on there? Mm -hmm. yeah. A month from now, they're going to find out. Amen. A month from now, they could find out. They could, they could pass by and see just quite a stir going on and say, what, what, what has the Lord done to that? What, what, is, what has taken place there? Oh, they sought the Lord. Amen. They prayed to the Lord. They've experienced revival. Now, I don't know. Brother Larry hasn't divulged anything about any of you. So I don't come in here with a preconceived notion. I'm going to straighten things out. But I know church life. Mm -hmm. And I know we can get tired. And I know we can get heavy in the trenches. There's always room for revival. Amen. So now, if you'll follow me to the book I intend to start in, and that's the book of Haggai. <laughs> Sandwich between the Z's, Zephaniah and Zechariah. The book of Haggai. I've preached this before. I've preached in the book of Haggai before. But it's just sort of like John 3, 16. Is that a bad verse? <laughs> no. One of the most used verses across the land. But it's still the Lord's word. Amen. So... What I want to start here with Haggai, I want to give you some background, and then we'll, we'll get to the preaching. Background of Haggai, you've got to understand that Haggai is the first of three prophets that delivered, that delivered the Word of God after captivity to the Babylonians. Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, Habakkuk, Obadiah, they all prophesied during, the, during or near the end of captivity. Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi prophesied following and during that end. These are some of the last words, some of the last words to the Jewish people mm -hmm. concerning the situation. The words the prophet spake to them was awakening the people to give them a prompting to return to worship. Amen. The name Haggai is said to mean festive, festive one or my feast. His history, we don't have a whole lot about his history, 
but it is said that he is born during captivity. It is said that he came to Jerusalem when Cyrus permitted a portion of the Jews to return and Zerubbabel and all that grab stuff and that. Second Chronicles 36, 23 says this, Thus saith, saith Cyrus, king of Persia, All the kingdoms of the earth hath the Lord God of heaven given me, and he hath charged me to build him an house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah, who is there among you all his people. Mm -hmm. The Lord his God be with him, and let him go up. Amen. Sixteen years had passed. From the time of the foundation, the foundations were laid. We're going to get into this, and I'm not going to beat you up a whole lot tonight on a lot of background, because we'll get a little more, a little more as we go. But I want us to understand here, the book of Haggai is a very, very powerful book. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I've ever read it and was not challenged when I read it. Mm -hmm. You say, well, uh, you read it and you didn't you make some corrections? I did. But the Lord reveals new things to you right. as you go. Amen. The Lord will take this word and something in it will stand out. Mm -hmm. And we're going to see some things. And I know I'm getting away from my notes, but I do that a lot. It's just the way I, I do. But I want you to understand, you're going to see some things taking place. In verse 1, chapter 1, verse 1, it says, In the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, Unto Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, saying. But I want to stop there and point something out to you. When you get there where it says, came to the word of the Lord, and then that little word by. Mm -hmm. It means in the hand. Right. It was in his hand. In the hand. Haggai was bringing a message to God's people. Amen. And it was a message to awaken. Awaken. We know God's good for his promises. He does not go back. And I know with all the things going on with Israel right now, and I mean, listen, here's the deal. I pray for Israel. Mm -hmm. We pray as a church on Wednesday nights. They're on our prayer list. We pray for them. We pray that they come to salvation through Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray that they would see the one they deny. But I also know God is good with his word. Amen. And I know every tongue and tribe and nation shall be there. Mm -hmm. they, they, they will not get pushed off in the sea. That it will not happen. Amen. But what are we going to do about it? We pray for them. We pray for them. But what do we pray? Come to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Come to Jesus Christ. I made the comment and your pastor can straight down, but, you know, somebody asked me, are you preaching through prophecy right now? I said, no, we're in 1 Corinthians. <laughs> because it's all about Christ. <laughs> so, I'm leading somewhere in this, and I want you to understand where I'm going. The Samaritans caused a stir there and hindered the work of their hands. The work was suspended. Fourteen years the work was not attended to. Cyrus permitted the work, Artaxerxes stopped the work. Darius reinstated the work. Mm -hmm. And all through that time, if you didn't know better, you could read that and say, well, oh, well, I tell you, maybe God didn't know that they were going to hinder it. Maybe God didn't know. No, God knew. Amen. He knew the whole time. Right. He knew each one of those kings. Mm -hmm. He knew. He knew the people that was there. Who do you think sent them there? Amen. Who do you think allowed them to go there? Amen. Who do you think took that material? It was all in God's hands. Amen. So, the time has come, and the Lord sends a message. The message was in the hand of Haggai. If you summarize the book of Haggai, you can summarize it like this. Finish what you started. Mm -hmm. Finish Amen. what you started. So, with that being said, let's get into the preaching of the Word. And I've titled this, Faltering in frustration. Faltering in frustration. We are in times it would be easy just to throw in the towel. Mm -hmm. It'd be easy to just get depressed. Uh, Brother Larry mentioned something that I 100% agree with. And that's where we're preachers. <laughs> you keep watching the news. You keep dwelling 
on Fox News mm. or CNN or wherever you go, that's where you'll be every night. Mm -hmm. You keep submersing yourself in the news. You keep submersing yourself in all these different people and what they got to say and their opinions. You understand it's heathen talking about Israel and they don't know the right. end. Right. They don't know the promise we know. And they can bring you down. Mm -hmm. Now, I would ask you, who's in charge of that? Right. I know who was in charge of sending them back mm -hmm. right here in the book of Haggai. And I know who was in, the char in charge of disturbing the work that was going on. And it's the same one that disturbs today. Yes. And don't let them disturb your minds getting submersed in Fox News or CNN or there whatever it is of how bad everything is. Because Jesus is coming soon. Amen. Is that bad? No, it's not bad. He's coming soon. Amen. Morning, night, and noon. Every morning you wake up. You ever thought about who wakes you up? Mm -hmm. yeah. God wakes you up. That's it. You ever thought about when you wake up, that, that yawn, that big breath you take? That's a blessing in God. Amen. People say, I, 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 I can't see the blessings. I wish I had blessings like you do, Pastor. You do. You're breathing, aren't you? There you go. He gave you the air. He gave you a job. He's given you food. He's given you clothes on your back. He gave you a church building to come have church in. Amen. Blessings, 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 but we get frustrated. <laughs> and when we frustrate, we get frustrated, we falter. And we falter in frustration. What we need to do tonight is we need to look within. So that's my first point tonight as we start here. We need to look within, and I sort of put parentheses at the problem. Watch what he does here. Verse 2. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts. And that being Jehovah, that's, that's the Lord. Mm -hmm. Saying, this people say, the time is not come. The time that the Lord's house should be built. I don't know if you are, uh, if any of you is like like I am, but if you come to my house and I hope to have Brother Larry down with us, uh, hopefully next year, I got something going here. But if he gets to come to my house, I'll get to walk him out there, take him on tour of this project and that project <laughs> and that project and that project, and if I run out, my wife can give him a list. <laughs> Unfinished projects. It's really not a good thing. And you know it's not a good thing when you invite a bunch of people over to your house. Because now all you do is move, move your junk from here to over here. It looks better. I won't go into that too much. My wife's probably, if she's watching or if this is live stream, she's probably saying, yeah. Here's the problem. Notice what he said in verse 2. This is why every word matters. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts. There's a comma, and then say, comma, this people. This people say. Who do you think he's talking about? You think he's talking about the ones that troubled the work going on? No, he's talking about his people. You got it. This people say. I think it's interesting. We come from 2 Chronicles. It says, if my people. Mm -hmm. right. Amen. But we see where the Lord is at this time. He says, this people. Mm -hmm. Well, there he is. But he's setting the tone there. This people say. Do you know what he did in that? In those few words, do you know what he did in that right there? This people say. He just took all their excuses away. Amen. He took Amen. every excuse away. He put it back on them. I brought you home. I gave you what you needed. Mm -hmm. And here it lays. This people say. Because in their mind and in our mind, when we do here, as we get hindered, we'll set off on a course. Um, boy, we're going to set things on fire. But all it takes is one little problem. Right. And he brought it up, and I tell our church all the time, these things right here, they will stop you in your tracks of doing good things for the Lord. Yep. All it takes is a little Facebook. In the world of preachers, all it takes is a preacher to say something I disagree with. What? 
And we're, we're, we're stopped in our tracks. We're not thinking about praying. We're not thinking about getting prepared for next Sunday. We're not thinking about anything else, but I, he's wrong. Right. And then the war ensues. And guess what? The people follow. And what happens? No work going on. The foundations are laid and the weeds are growing over it. Because we're so consumed with things that don't matter. And I believe, I really believe that the Lord Jesus Christ is this people say. Mm -hmm. That's my that's my called man. Those are my called people. They say. We right. have to be careful with not faltering in frustration. Amen. Yeah. I'm not saying you won't get frustrated. I get frustrated daily. Daily. Mm-hmm. But we'll get to that later. We notice right here in this second verse that the Lord was not focused on opposition. Right. Think about it. Think from his view. I'm the creator of the world. <laughs> Amen. I've given you the land and the seas. I've given you trees. I've given you gardens. I've given you food. I've given you everything. And you're going to give me an excuse? Hmm. <laughs> He was not focused on opposition. He went to the root of the problem. They had lost their zeal. Mm -hmm. They had lost their zeal in the Lord. We could look back to 2 Chronicles, but we, we maybe don't need to right now at this point. But I, there's several verses that leads to this. You have Jeremiah 20, 25, 12. In fact, in fact, I think I will look at that. Uh, Jeremiah 25, 12. And that'll lead us to another place. Because we got to remember, I'm, I love studying Jewish culture. Uh, some of my preacher friends will uh, affirm to that. Um, I, I love Jewish culture because it, it opens more up to you. Amen. And you understand more what's going on in the Gospels. But chapter 25, verse 12 of Jeremiah, look what he's saying here in verse 12. It says, It shall come to pass when 70 years are accomplished that I will punish the king of Babylon, and that nation saith the Lord for their iniquity and the land of the Chaldeans and will make it perpetual desolation. Amen. Go to 29.10. For thus saith the Lord that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you Amen. and causing you to return to this place. And then I'm going to hit Isaiah. I'm going to hit Isaiah 44. And that'll be it. And we'll go back to Haggai. I'd say tonight's foundation is background. Because we got to know where we come from to know where we're going. That's it. And now we have it here in Isaiah 44, verse 28. Last verse of that chapter. That saith of Cyrus, he is my shepherd and shall perform all my pleasure, even saying to Jerusalem, thou shalt be built, and to the temple thy foundation shall be laid. Amen. So here's what you got to understand is they knew the word. They had been prophesied to. Mm -hmm. And then now here we are. Frustrated, aggravated, mm -hmm. beside ourselves, to the point we just sit down. Folks, my goal this week, and it's already as I've studied and prayed and prepared, is that I want the fire within me burning hot for Amen. the Lord. Yeah. I want, listen, it, it, it's like this. We, we have a girl's home we go to and we minister to. I did not go search them out. But there's times, and there'll be days in this church, there'll be opportunities that come to these doors that there are not an opportunity to me. I'm in Florida, you're here. But there's something going to come that's going to cause you to have a stir in your belly go, I don't know, I've never, mm. But the Lord will lead you through it. Amen. I was looking for concrete lentils over windows. I went to Cascrete. That's all they make is lentils and parking curves. Anything with rebar in it, you know, whatever measurements you need. I walk in, 
I talked to one person. They said, you need to see this guy. So I go see this guy. He says, how can I help you? I said, I need six lentils. I need them, whatever, the six foot four inches. I need to get a price on them. He says, well, who are you, who are you with? I said, I'm Pastor Pearson, Faith Baptist Church. When I said it, he started bawling. <laughs> he says, I've been praying you'd come. And I thought, oh, here we go. <laughs> he said, hear me out. And he told me about this home where these girls that's been trafficked and abused mm. and abandoned. He said, you're a Baptist. And I said, yes. He said, would you be willing to teach this or teach that? I said, I'll be willing to teach anything that's in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Amen. He said, would you be willing to dress up? I said, no. Would you be willing to do this? I said, no. I said, if I go, they're going to learn the Bible. Mm -hmm. And we'll feed them a meal. He said, that'd be great. He said, you're what they need. Okay. So we go and minister to him. The first night out there, I thought I was going to lose myself. I'm out of my zone. Mm -hmm. I'm out in the church house. Right. I'm out of the church house and snorting and stomping and shouting and preaching. I'm in a bunch, an area with 16, 15 girls with their arms crossed. Mm -hmm. The world is their shell. Mm -hmm. How am I going to get through to them? Maybe I'll only give them a slide or a swing. No, I just start reading the Bible. Amen. Have you considered? Have you looked at this? Have you thought about this? Guess what? This could be. Over time, guess who they want to come? Pastor Pierce and Faith Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. Over time, guess what? They got to start coming to church once a month with us on Sundays. Guess which church they want to go to? <laughs> Could you believe it? 45 to 50 minutes of preaching every Sunday, they want to sit right there and hear it. Hey, Amen. Yeah. Out of your zone. Well, it's not here. It's not meeting right here. It's not here at 805. No, it may be across town. Mm -hmm. But the Lord will bless. If he's laid it in your lap and you just follow him, he'll bless. Now, I see things changing. It could be that we end up losing that. I don't know, but guess what? He's already laid another opportunity at my door. Amen. There's, a, there's an assisted living home that has nobody preaching to him. Mm. They get to watch Joel Osteen on TV. My Lord. Can you guess where I might be headed? Mm-hmm. Am I comfortable? No. I preached in nursing home before. I had one man cussing me the whole time I was preaching. I preached right over him. By the end of it, guess what? He got that hymn when I started saying, he sang more beautifully than anybody in there. Where his mind was, I don't know. Because I know when your mind goes that, he may have been a godly man. Mm -hmm. But when your mind does that, and dementia and sundowners and everything, you don't know where people are. Right. You just keep doing what the Lord will have you do. Amen. This isn't about Pastor Pierce. This isn't about, oh, clap, wait, good job, Pastor Pierce. This is about an opportunity to experience revival. Mm -hmm. And I believe the Lord's blessing the church because of things like that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'll leave that there. There's opportunities to be had. People tend to dwell on opposition. The Lord wasn't dwelling on it, but people tend to dwell on it. Let's go to Ezra 4, and while we're there, we're going to see Ezra 4 and Ezra 3. Ezra 4, we're going to see opposition on the outside. Ezra 3, we're going to see opposition on the inside. Mm -hmm. And I want that one down that hymn, if you will. See, preachers know it, Brother Larry knows it, and some of you, I know y'all know it too, but there's times when the Lord just clarifies as I struggled all week, uh, just mm -hmm. in the weeks prior, and then uh, I'm laboring and I'm studying, and Lord, I, I know Brother Larry's preached Haggai to them before, and I know, what am I going to bring that Brother Larry hasn't preached? He, he preaches through the Bible, he preaches the Bible. What, I mean, what can I offer? What I can offer is what God put me Amen. to. Amen. And that's the book of Haggai. But I noticed tonight, here's when things come together. Uh, uh, the hymnal, page 105, pressing along the glory. I, I was looking at the words that were going along there. 
extolling grace that saves the race. Press Amen. along to glory land. Press along, press along. Glad soul, press along, giving out the message grand. Letting love, God's love, be your song. Press along to glory land. Amen. Now, let's see what happens here in Ezra 4 after reading that. Let's see what happens. We see opposition on the outside, Ezra 4. Verse 1, it says, Now when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard that the children of captivity built the temple unto the Lord God of Israel, then they came to Zerubbabel and to the chief of the fathers and said unto them, Let us build with you, for we seek your God as ye do. And we do sacrifice unto him since the days of Esarhaddon, king of Asher, which brought up brought us up hither but Zerubbabel and Jeshua and the rest of the chief of the fathers of Israel said unto them ye have nothing to do with us Amen. to build an house unto our God but we ourselves together will build unto the Lord God of Israel as King Cyrus the king of Persia hath commanded us then the people of the land weakened the hands of the people of Judah and troubled them in building and here's the interesting part. And hired counselors mm -hmm. against them to frustrate the purpose of the purpose all the days of Cyrus, king of Persia, even until the reign of Darius, king of Persia. And in the reign of Hashuerus, in the beginning of his reign, wrote they unto him an accusation against the inhabitants of Judah and Jerusalem. I want to tell you. As time marches on, all eyes are on Israel now, but guess where the eyes are going to be next? Right here. Mm -hmm. Right here. We had a trial run a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. Right here. I had a pastor arrested one mile from me. Yep. I called Brother Shepard. I said, Brother, it's right on my door. He says, All I can tell you, Brother, I'll bail you out. I said, Well, that's what I was wanting to make sure. <laughs> we're not shutting down. There you go. Because I searched it, I had people staring at me. What are we going to do, Pastor? I've never led through nothing like this. What are we going to do? Well, I got back up, told him. I can't find him here where he says he's not with the church. Amen. Because he says he'll be with it always. That's right. Always. Verse 5, it says, and hired counselors. You know, if you look that word up, it says advice. It means advisors. They had hired advisors. Words, folks. Nothing but words. Verbal assault specialist. That's all they were. That's it. And it stopped the work. They didn't go steal their tools. They didn't go break their hands. They just spoke harsh. There you go. It keep this this gets more interesting. Against them to frustrate their purpose. To frustrate. The word frustrate means to break up. Mm -hmm. To violate to cast off. It's going to get harder. Yep. And it's going to get harder. And there's going to be advisors. <laughs> do, we, do we see any advisors going on in the news back, you know, about two, three years ago? Right. Everybody became a professional, even myself. <laughs> <laughs> They'd say something like that. It's not true. Take this. That's not true. Take that. Now, I'm not, wherever you stand, I'm fine with it. But what I'm saying is, it was just amazing to me that the church was one of the main pinpoints. There you go. Well, the word purpose there, it might surprise you to know that it means advice, hmm. plan, purpose, counsel. So, bad advisors frustrated the advice of the Lord. Mm. Because the Lord had led Cyrus to let him go. Get back over there, build a house. Mm -hmm. And it frustrated everything they were doing. Nothing but words. That's 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 opposition from without. Now we'll be back. chapter three. We gotta be careful in the churches and and we got we got good godly folks in our churches. We gotta be careful with this in chapter three, look at verse 10. And when the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, they set the priest in their apparel with trumpets. And the Levites, the sons of Asaph, 
with cymbals to praise the Lord after the ordinance of David, king of Israel. And they sang together by course and praising and giving thanks unto the Lord because he is good, for his mercy endureth forever toward Israel. And all the people shouted with a great shout when they praised the Lord because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. Amen. Now, before I go on, the interesting thing there is when Cyrus made that decree and they went back, it was in the second year hmm. of being back that they laid the foundations. You can find that up in verse 8. Now in the second year, they're coming to the house of God at Jerusalem. In the second month, began Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, and Jeshua, the son of Josedach, and the remnant of the brethren, the priests, and the Levites, and all they that were come out of the captivity unto Jerusalem, and appointed Levites from 20 years old and upward to set forward the work of the house of the Lord. Amen. So we see there, we see the background, we see the substance, we see what's going on. Now, opposition within, look at verse 12. But many of the priests and the Levites and the chief of the fathers who were ancient men that had seen the first house when the foundation of this house was laid before their eyes wept with a loud voice and many shouted aloud for joy so that the people could not discern the noise of the shout of joy from the noise of weeping of the people for the people shouted with a loud shout and the noise was heard afar off. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna tell you, folks watch it. They watch it, they don't come. Mm -hmm. These people right around here, they watch you. Mm -hmm. And they watch your character. They watch your deportment. They watch what goes on in this, in this church. Mm -hmm. Be careful. I've been preaching a lot to our church about loving one another. Mm -hmm. Loving one another. Amen. John 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. Loving one one another, loving the brethren. We're in a time when Baptist churches, we can't even get along. Right. How are we going to win anyone? Mm -hmm. You say, well, I don't believe in that winning souls. Well, the need to read Proverbs. But anyhow, <laughs> that's another sermon. Opposition on the inside will also cause the work to stop. Mm -hmm. Opposition on the outside, we cannot let the work be stopped. Mm -hmm. So, 2 Timothy 2. Now I see my time is running out, but that's okay. I got all week. <laughs> I say 2 Timothy, 1 Timothy. Here's what, here's 1 Timothy 2, because I want to bring it into our lap tonight. I asked, I asked the church I pastor, I asked each one of them, I, you know, in front of them, and I don't ask them to talk and all that, but uh, you give me a head nod or a you know, but I asked them, I said, hey, how, when's the, did, did you pray for Joe Biden this morning? Did you pray for Joe Biden? Why not? You're frustrated. Mm -hmm. And when you're frustrated, it will hinder the work. Amen. You say, well, I, I don't know, I can pray for that guy, we'll see. Chapter 2, I exhort therefore that first of all supplications and prayers and intercessions, giving of thanks, be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus, Amen. who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Wherefore, I am ordained a preacher and an apostle. I speak the truth in Christ and lie not, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith, verity, in verity. I will, therefore, that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands Amen. without wrath and doubting. See, people forget that doubting. Mm -hmm. Pray for your president. Mm -hmm. God could call him and save him. Right? I love it. I love where he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. unless the Father draws them. Amen. And that grieving means he's, and he's dragged, mm -hmm. drugging, holding to him. In like manner also, 
that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, shamefacedness, and sobriety, not bro with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh women there professing go. godliness with good works. Mm -hmm. Young women, don't dress like the world. Amen. That isn't what God wants. You dress in the manner that matches this right here. Mm -hmm. You want to make a difference? Do this. Amen. Men, you need to be praying. Mm -hmm. Ladies, you need to be praying. Why? I prayed and God didn't save you. You still living peacefully? Mm -hmm. anybody, anybody coming to your door and keeping you from coming to church? Mm -hmm. We just have to follow the order God has laid. There you go. He didn't say, and, and you'll get to see all the results. He just said, do it. He just said, do it. For Adam was first born, then Eve, then Adam, and not, was not deceived. But the woman being deceived was not in transgression, notwithstanding, was in the transgression, I'm sorry, was in the transgression, notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith. And there's the three things I want you to see. What's going to happen to us? How will, we, how will it work out for us? Well, we'll see what, what he says to do here. If we continue in faith, that means persuasion, it means conviction, it means truth. If we continue in, in charity, it says and charity, that's agape, it's love, benevolence, affection, and holiness, purification is purity. And sobriety, it means a soundness of mind and self-control. You say, well, you're wrapping all this together Yes, I, I, I'm trying to wrap it together because whether it be the Jews of the Old Testament or saved Gentiles of the New Testament, we're all people. Mm -hmm. And we all get frustrated. And we all give up and get a little weak. But we cannot. We cannot. It will not work. So what I want to do tonight, I'm not going to make it through all this, which is fine. We'll pick up on it tomorrow night. But I want to leave you enough to think about and to pray about tomorrow. As soon as I get back to where I need to be, Haggai won this people. Mm -hmm. First of all, would you even be categorized as his people? Mm -hmm. Now, like I said, I have no doubt that there's many saved here. But I also have no doubt there's probably some that has not professed right. Christ as their Savior. You're right. Well, if he does blessings like that and takes his people home, and yes, they, they, they didn't do exactly what they should do, to the point he says this people, you know what the blessing is? He's still over them. Mm -hmm. There's no hope for revival for you if you have not trusted on the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to change that. See, the notes are good, but they're not everything. Mm -hmm. We'll end with this, because I see some young people that they, their heads looked up when I mentioned that. Go to John chapter 3. We'll end with this. We'll get back to this people and carry on tomorrow night. Because first of all, it's a blessing to be one of his people. Mm -hmm. I mentioned John 3.16 earlier. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to, to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. That's where you stand. That's where it, you're condemned already. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't even be in the this people. Mm -hmm. You're in the unrecognized. This people yeah. say you're not even in it. Mm -hmm. Well, we keep going here. Watch this. Verse 18, he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Amen. Verse 19, and this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. There you go. That word condemnation is a very important word. In the Greek, it's Christus. 
K-R-I-S-I-S. -I -S. It's where we get our English word crisis. Mm. And here's the crisis. You don't have the Lord. Mm -hmm. It might be interesting to know that the word judgment, Hebrews 9.27, would you like to guess what that is? Same thing. It's a crisis. Mm -hmm. To stand before God without Jesus Christ, His blood upon you, being cleansed from your sin. In the Old Testament, the people we're talking about in Haggai, their sins would be covered. But with the blood of Jesus Christ, it does not only cover you, it cleanses you. Amen. And it makes you able to stand in front of him. And be moved to the right side. Mm -hmm. It's always good to be on the right side of Jesus Christ. That's it. I just got through telling our folks, when you stand before God, Hebrews 9.27, it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment, mm -hmm. the Christus. You're either going to stand before him by yourself and answer for every sin, or you're going to have an advocate. Amen. Are you? You're going to have the pardon. Amen. I, I, I bring it down to this. Everyone in here, even young folks, has seen on TV or something court. Mm -hmm. There's always lawyers and defense attorneys. Why are they there? They're trying to protect one or the other. Mm -hmm. The defendant or the other. Mm -hmm. That's what Jesus Christ is for you. Amen. If you believe and trust in him. If not, you will defend yourself. And even in our world, I don't know if you've watched it. See, I know this stuff because my father's a retired detective, 28 years. Anytime a man tried to defend himself, it didn't go well. Right. <laughs> And I'll tell you, if you do not have Jesus Christ, the shape you're sitting in, there's no defense. Right. There's no defense. Because Romans 3 says that you don't even want him. There's none that seeketh after God. It's a man. There's none righteous. No, not one. Where does that leave you? It leaves you without a defense. So what will you do with that? I'd rather be, I'd rather be under the finger of this people say, right, than to not be under his hand at all. Don't let the world frustrate you. Don't let the world stop and hinder what you could do Amen. for the Lord. I'm all about, and Brother Larry knows, I, I, listen, I believe in sovereign grace. I believe in election. I believe, I believe God has to draw you unto him. But why are you here tonight? Mm -hmm. Well, my parents made me come. Was it your parents? We just we just went over who who brought those Jews back. Mm -hmm. Was it was it their parents? It's the hand of God. Amen. This is not a game. In the times we're in, right. it's not a game. Amen. And I hope you hear what the Word is saying this week. Man. So we'll pick back up tomorrow night in the book of Haggai, but don't let opposition out there prevent you from doing the work you should do. Amen. Don't let the opposition on the TV, on the computer, on YouTube, on Facebook, don't let that opposition stop you. And if you're unsaved here tonight and you're already trying to push it off and push it aside, don't let the great opposer stop you. Mm -hmm. I can preach the word and as the fowl there, the fly and the pluck that seed out of it and take root. That's what the Bible says. Who do you think is over that? Mm -hmm. Just follow the word. We're in times we better follow the word. Mm -hmm. You say, well, aren't you worried about what's going on there? Well, I, I, sure, I, I hope that no bad comes. I, I'm sorry for those that are get killed in the way I am. But my job is to preach the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I want them saved. I want you saved. It's no accident that I, I got on two, what, one, two, three jets today to get here. Mm -hmm. It's no accident. Much money spent for me to be here. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to be on the other side of after a week like this. 
is push it off. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to be there. So what will you do with it? The word's been given. What will you do with it? Mm -hmm. what